little icon up at the top, which you can you can kind of see. But now I have the uh, toolbars that I can move around, and this is the uh, the toolbar again. <clears throat> if you remember, um, under Window and uh, Toolbars, you can see this. It has Advanced and Basic. I'm going to click on Advanced, so it gives me all the uh, toolbars that I have up here, and uh, this expands it to two rows, two columns. So I have all the tools. Everything that's hidden underneath this is what you're what you're looking at. So <clears throat> I had all the windows open, but I'll show you how that comes about as we go through it. I kind of like to save some screen space. The only trouble now is when I click this, you can't see the uh, section, but the panel options are over there. And uh, when I click that open, it shows this uh, this selection. So that'll give me that uh, that piece there. Uh, but we'll keep it in there. Small row size thumbnails. You can do layers, groups, objects, all that kind of kind of thing. But I'll just keep it up there for this time, just to show it to you. Um, but at least that way you can see the see the imagery. So on uh, Christian's logo, you can see that I have his on a layer. And just by double clicking, here's the lock lock next to it. All these little icons stand for something. You know, if I Double click on there. I can type the name, change the title. There's selecting everything that's on it. If it's locked, everything. So I just hide it for now. Just going to use the space bar and scooch over to Savannah's and go ahead and click down below. You can see these. Some of the icons are a little different. So I'm going to double click on this one and just uh, type in Savannah there. I got that spelled right. Okay. And uh, the idea now is to take a look at everything that you see with the logo, the tools, and everything that go with there, and to see what's going to be the best way to represent this logo with what you know on Illustrator so far. So I'm taking the uh, rectangle tool just to start it off. And here's the rectangular shape. I'm going to draw it and then just take it out again show it without letting go. I'm holding the space bar which allows me to move it. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out the top, the side, and the bottom just to fit right in there. It's a white fill, black stroke. I'm just going to take the fill out. And now these little widgets, corner widgets, I can click and drag and uh, make that shape. Now I could have used the uh, rounded rectangle tool. would have done a similar approach. The arrow keys on the keyboard are the ones that make the uh, selection go in and then once I'm done I can still adjust it. So a lot of ways to do a similar uh, function as we go through this. Okay, I'm going to leave this right now but uh, at that thickness and here's window with stroke down at the bottom. This window pops open and I'm just going to add it to this uh, selection up here. So now I have the stroke in here. Inside the panel it says here show options so it gives me all the options that are in there for coming up for the next part. And with a logo, you're trying to look for things that are similar. So I'm going to keep this. Um, I might scooch that up just a little bit and use this uh, same shape and just come down here with option, see the double-headed arrow, and duplicate it. Put it right where that next one is. Right there. And now I have that shape already drawn just with that piece. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to come back up to Window and go to uh, down below. Here you have all the palettes. Some are hidden from the video, so that's not going to hurt. <clears throat> but the one I want to swatch is just happens to be down here at the bottom. And here's all my color palette. Amazing. Believe that they show up. So if I give it a color, just so you can see it, it shows that I'm, I'm missing something there. So this part is where it's going to cut off. I could take and go ahead and use um, another shape, a rectangle tool. I'll give that one a color and uh, say, hey, why don't I just cut this right off? If you remember Window Pathfinder, so I'm going to bring that one up and bring that palette up here, scooch it up here. I'll just set it here for now. And to go ahead and use this uh, minus front from the back, it cuts it, but it still has the attachment here. It's like, okay, I don't want that. So the tool that you want to use is the scissors tool. Now, if you're not sure where it is, you can click and hunt for it. And uh, sometimes they're organized in uh, settings, groups, and stuff like that. So when you click through this, you're thinking, where is that uh, scissor? 
and if you can see it, it's always a tricky, tricky one. This is the eraser. It used to look like an eraser. Now it doesn't look as much like one I like. But scissors tool pops open. And so now I look at this and I say, okay, maybe I'm going to click on, you know, I can select this path. I don't have to. But I'll click on it here. And I'll come down here and click on the path right there. And that gives me, yeah, click off of everything and click on this part to take that away and just delete it. So now I have... <coughs> this section and this section okay so that's kind of nice so with this end piece I could try to say well how do I want to close that in you know as that little section and this rectangular shape how do I fix that one to get that closed in so you could say well I want to make this into a shape or just go ahead and make it into a path <clears throat> so if I do it as a path I just click on the end first I'm going to Take the direct selection tool and then click on that point. And then just command plus to zoom in to show it to you. So I'm, I'm straightening it up just a little bit. It's, I'm using the arrow key just to bump it back a little. And now I'm going to uh, click on it and just come up to here to see what's... Make sure I click on it first. It starts the continuation of that. And I'm not sure exactly what that shape is, but I'll, I'll give it a piece like that come down here. So now I can go ahead and add that piece together and say I want to connect that. So I'm going to do it one different, one way differently. Instead of doing that, I'm going to click on this with the stroke panel. Now that I see this, I'm just changing my mind on this one. And I'm going to give it a thickness to it. And I'm going to come to the top one and do the same thing. Make it two points thickness. And while they're both selected, I'll zoom out so you can see it, I'm just going to make an outline so you can see that the path is right on the middle. <clears throat> Here I'm going to go to path and do what they call outline the stroke. So now it's a shape. Okay, And it's no longer a path, but it has this shape there for that section. So now I can go ahead and just add shapes to these little corner pieces here. So I'll take the uh, ruler guide, and I'm just going to set a ruler guide down at the bottom one here and take a ruler guide and put one on the right hand side and just make sure my guides are showing, show guides so there's a couple guides right on the vertical and top piece and now I'll just zoom in, take the pen tool and you can kind of see the connection there, I'm just going to put a shape right on that ruler guide and curve it so it fits right into there and I'll just hit that selection and since this is a color, I'll give it a color just so you can see the shape. It's just a little red red piece in there. So that gives me that selection. Black part I'll just take off so it goes right to that edge. Do the same with this one. I'll just click a point. And I'm just coming down to this corner, to this edge. And I'll just swap it so you can see it. So I'm just kind of overlapping it enough to get me in there and just swap it so it's red to that section. So you can see I'm just patching it up because I figure it might be the easiest way. Here's the anchor point. I'll just click on it, zoom in, and it takes me to that anchor point. Spacebar just to move the hand. And just come up here. I might, I might just make this a curve up to that section. Click here, make the fill in the stroke the opposite direction, and come to here. and then now swap, swap it back. So now, very easily I have those three pieces, one, two, three, connected. Just to show you that this is a, a shape, I'll click on it to give it a color, and same with the, the blue one down here. So that's going to be that particular selection. Okay, so just using the RGB color palette. So, pretty much have it. Just go to the Layers panel. I have these uh, windows. I'll show you how to do the icons later. I'll just hide the graphics. I'll command semicolon to hide the ruler guides. And now I have all these pieces. Now, just to show you, they're all separate. And I'll put them back in a second, but just to show you what they are. And then command Z for each piece to come back. And just select, make sure all, is, all are selected. 
and you could do the uh, Pathfinder. Put that up here so you can see it. Right there. And it makes it one, one solid shape. It just combines everything. So now you have this, this image right there. Okay? So that gives you a, kind of a quick segment. And again, once you have that piece, then you can take it as just option and set it off to the side. But I can take it, I can take the color palette, I can change the coloring of this. It can be a gradient when you get in, we get into doing the gradients. You can see some of the selection involved into that. So here's a gradient, for example. Just a, a grayscale gradient. And that gives you that. It's kind of hidden in there, but I can always add some pieces to it. So it'll give you uh, quite, the, uh, quite the selection if I go back to just a solid color. <clears throat> There's a 3D extrusion that we can, we'll get into, but just to show it to you. So this is just kind of showing you a kind of a selection that has uh, a thickness to it. So it's all kinds of options that you can come up with and give yourself um, that particular look to it, all based off of the initial drawing that you had. Okay. So once you have it finished, I'm just going to hit the tab key to hide all the palettes, command R to hide the rulers. The letter F key is going to hide all the palettes, so it's just a blank screen, and command plus will zoom in. Keep it on the screen here. And I want to take the screenshot, so it's on the uh, classroom page, but it's command shift three will take a picture of the entire window. Command shift four gets the crosshair. I want to look for some white space that's around all three, four sides, maybe a little heavier on the bottom. And just let go. And there you have the uh, connection.